Minecraft. It is one of the most popular games of all time, and if you found this, it might be one of your first times playing it. Or you're just coming back to Minecraft and you're wondering, what is Minecraft in 2023? Now, we're going to be including everything in this, including the basics. If you've never played Minecraft before, guess what? This video is going to help you. If you've played Minecraft in the past, some of the stuff at the beginning may be something you already know. And if that's the case, we have video chapters allowing you to skip around. For example, you may just want to go ahead and skip to when we're in game in the surviving the first night section. Something else I want to note here is that we're going to be focusing on survival Minecraft. Creative is a lot easier to play than survival and once you've got survival down you can go crazy building and you know exploring and things like that in creative but survival is what we're going to be focusing on here because it's the more difficult of the survival and creative game modes in Minecraft. Also it's worth mentioning there are two versions of Minecraft Java and Bedrock. Java Edition is the one that originally came out back in, I think, 2009, and it has kept up to date since that time. Still to this day, it is up to date, and it has the newest features Minecraft has. However, there's also Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and that also has all the newest features Minecraft has. The biggest difference between these versions is actually the platforms that you play them on. Java Edition can only be played on Windows computers and Macs. Whereas Bedrock Edition can be played on things like an Xbox, a PlayStation 4, a mobile phone, anything like that. Any device that's not a computer can play Bedrock Edition. If you have Minecraft on any of those other devices, it's Bedrock Edition. Now this video is, for the most part, going to work on both Java and Bedrock. So you don't really have to worry about which version you're playing on, but it is something to keep in mind if you're purchasing the game. If you're on PC, go with Java Edition. If you're on another device, go with Bedrock Edition. Now, let's go ahead and dive on into the basics of Minecraft. There are four things you need to know about. Gathering materials, crafting, building, and fighting. Gathering materials is the part of Minecraft that includes everything from chopping down trees and mining to even punching grass in order to get seeds. Anything where you're breaking something in the environment to get something back could also even include gathering materials as things like, you know, killing animals in order to get food and all of that stuff. It's kind of brutal, but it's something you do in Minecraft and I would throw that in with gathering. Crafting is the process of taking those materials you've gathered and creating things from them. There are over 350 craftable items currently in Minecraft. This can be overwhelming, but luckily you can easily see every recipe that is in Minecraft right in game by simply clicking the crafting book that appears in your crafting menu. We'll show you this more later, but you're also seeing B-roll on the screen now. Building is one of my favorite parts of Minecraft. This is where you actually create structures, houses, barns, anything and everything, spaceships. The Minecraft builds that people have done over the years is absolutely amazing and it truly shows how endless the options are for what you can build when you set your mind to it. Truly, there is so much to do that it's overwhelming, and in this video, we're going to give you some of the basics to get started with building, but truthfully, it's kind of up to your imagination as to what you want to create in-game, and I guess in survival, it's also limited by the materials you want to gather. Creative is where if you just want to build and not have to worry about that, you can do it. The last of the main four things is fighting, and this is in reference to the combat system in Minecraft. In the traditional survival context, you're talking about fighting mobs, right? Different player versus environment mobs. However, you can PvP if you're on multiplayer servers. A lot of servers have PvP, as a matter of fact, and it can be a great way to kind of just enjoy Minecraft and check out some of the player versus player aspects on servers. There are various kinds of swords that you can get, and we'll talk about the material hierarchy in Minecraft later on, but just know that Netherite is overall the best and that wood is overall the worst. There are different options in between, but that's the lowest and that's the highest. You can also use just an empty hand or a hand with any item in it to punch mobs basically and that's okay. You're just going to do a lot less damage than if you had a sword for example. There's also bows and crossbows in Minecraft which can be paired with arrows to do ranged attacks. So there's kind of a decent amount of different combat options in Minecraft but that's the basics. Nevertheless we can now go ahead and jump in game and get started. Now, the Minecraft main menu on Java Edition looks like this. Bedrock Edition is a bit different. You'll have a play button instead of a single player and multiplayer button, but overall, it's similar. 
Now, one of the things that's worth noting is creating a new single player world is as simple as creating single player, creating a new world, and then kind of filling out this information. For example, you can go ahead and name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it 2023 Beginner's Guide. And then we can go ahead and select our game mode, survival, creative, etc. We're going to be going with survival. You can also turn cheats on or off. And there's other things you can change in here. But for now, let's just go ahead and create our new world. Now, when you first spawn into your new survival world, there's some things that you want to do right away. First off is start chopping down some trees. Now right away we can see that we have this evergreen tree here. Honestly, this isn't my favorite world spawn and truthfully if I wasn't recording this guide and just trying to show that you can do this in any sort of an environment, I may try to get a different biome and that's okay. So don't be afraid if you need to change biomes to do that. Don't be afraid to do anything in Minecraft. You're not locked into the first world you create. Hopefully, in your Minecraft career, you will create a few. Now, as you can see, all I'm doing is punching trees here. This is just clicking on them and holding down. You don't have to rapidly click. Just click once and hold down, and the character will keep punching the tree until, of course, the log falls and breaks and goes into your inventory. Now, opening your inventory on Java Edition it can be done by default by hitting the E button, and that's going to open up your inventory here. You have a crafting menu up here, as well as all of your inventory slots. This down here is your hotbar. So as we can see, we now have all of these items and we can scroll between them using the scroll on our mouse to select them in our main hand. However, for now, we'll just keep them all stacked together. Now with our initial basically tree chopped down, we wanna go ahead and make ourselves a crafting table. To do that, open up that E to see that crafting menu. And then what you wanna do is take these spruce logs and put them up here in the crafting menu. As you can see right away, we have spruce planks. So let's go ahead and turn all of our logs into planks right like so. Then take four planks and boom, you have yourself a crafting table. We can then place this down and get a larger crafting menu. This is what you'll use to craft tools and all sorts of stuff. So that's why we wanted to get that out of the way right at the beginning. By the way, that crafting book I was talking about, right there it is. And if you click on it, you can see all the different stuff that you can create. For example, you can just click on the spruce door and it will make it for you. I find that a bit distracting, so in this video we're actually going to leave it turned off, but again, it's a great resource if you do want to not have to remember every single crafting recipe. Now, at this point, we want to go ahead and talk about getting some food, because food is super important for your first night surviving in Minecraft, and honestly, without it, it can be a bit difficult. Unfortunately, we do have a kind of bad spawn here. Like I said, I would have probably, if this is your first time playing, started a new spawn because it's just not the best. What we're looking for here is some cows, some chickens, some sheep, something like that. Rabbits would also work that we can just punch, right? Just right click and punch and get their food, right? That's what we want. We want to get their meat to be able to use that as food. But the problem is we're in a snow biome. These animals in many cases don't spawn here or very rarely do. So it's just kind of a hunting game, I guess, if you will, at this point, until we do find one that works. Um, I would also even move biomes at this point if I found one nearby, even in this video. You don't have to stay right where you spawn. You can move to another biome. And again, if this is your first time playing Minecraft, I would recommend not starting in a snow biome. Nevertheless, though, these polar bears will not work. They will uh, be aggressive, as you can see, and try to attack you. So you don't want to you don't want to mess with those. And if that does happen, you can just run away and um, yeah, get away from the polar bears that are angry and attacking you. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick jump cut here until I do find some animals, and then we can continue on with this guide. So finally, we have found ourselves some cows here, and we are going to unfortunately kill every single one of them just by punching them to get their uh, to get some beef because we need food, right? We are early game and the best early game food source is by far a animal, right? It's killing an animal unless you find a village and there is uh, some farms there and stuff like that that you can raid, but usually that's not going to be the case. We want to go ahead and kill some cows. By the way, this is a much better starting area than where we were at. For example, you can see there's coal over here. That's a great starting resource, this coal. And uh, we could use it, but again, uh, I don't want to. I feel like it's a bit disingenuous to this tutorial. So we're going to go back over here and then we'll continue with the guide. Next up, we're going to be crafting our pickaxe and getting going with that. So here we are back where we started. Now, like I said, first things first, you'll want to create a pickaxe. Now, 
Truthfully, I would only ever create one wooden pickaxe, and that's the only wooden tool I would ever have. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can create some sticks by stacking two planks over each other. And then using this sort of a pattern, we can create a wooden pickaxe. Now with this, we are then going to mine some stone. Now, by default, we don't really see any stone. There's some right there, but the best way to get to it is just gonna be digging down into the ground. So let's go ahead and just right here, we'll start digging under this tree. This is also going to double as our surviving basically home for the first night. The first night in Minecraft, I would always recommend just bunkering underground and mining. Then, once you've gotten some gear from bunkering underground and mining, you can actually come back up, build your house, and really get going. But at first, this is what we want to do. So let's go ahead, dig down here, and get some of this stone. All we need is three pieces, and then we're kind of done, right? So we get three pieces here, and then we can come back up and use that to create ourselves a stone pickaxe, right like so. So there we go. We will never use this wooden pickaxe again. We can now use the stone one. We also want to go ahead and, uh, with urgency, make ourselves a furnace. That's because, uh, well, we took some damage from that polar bear earlier, and our food is getting very, very low. Down here at the bottom, we have our health, and we have our food. So we want to watch those, and, uh, well... If you don't have enough, like your food's not all the way full, uh, you won't be able to heal your health. So it's very, very important that we do that. Now, in order to do this, I think we need uh, nine or so. And look at that. We got so lucky. The next thing we want to find is going to be coal. So let's go ahead and mine this as well. So we've gotten our cobblestone. We have gotten our coal. Next step that you want to do after you get your cobblestone is find some coal because this is what we're going to be using to power our furnace. Now, you can also use logs and planks even to power your furnace, but coal is so, so, so much more efficient, you might as well use that. Now, if we come back up here, we can look at the sun. And currently, it's uh, just past midday. The sun moves from this side over and back down. And obviously, when the sun sets, it's nighttime. And that's when all the mobs come out. So we want to try to avoid that. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a furnace. And since we're going to be surviving down in here for our first night, I'm actually going to place this down here as well. So we're going to go ahead and place the furnace there. Now in this furnace, what I want to do is go ahead and cook this food by taking and putting the coal here and putting the beef there. Now by cooking the food, it's going to make it one well, not poisonous when we eat it, and two, it's going to make it a lot more nutritious and feel a lot more of what a lot of people call your chicken nuggets down here and make those a lot easier to, uh, to fill up with a piece of steak. So if we go ahead and eat it, boom, it's going to fill nearly all of those up. One more and we're good. And guess what? We still have three pieces of steak left. Now, as you can see, we hit full health and immediately we start to see our health regenerate. Now, at this point, we're about to go underground and start basically gathering and getting resources and stone and all that overnight. Now, at this point, the one thing I would recommend you doing is if you still have some daylight lift left, chop down a few more trees. Now, in our case, it's tree, maybe one over here as well. But truthfully, there's not much more around us as far as wood goes. Usually you'd be chopping down oak, you would be chopping down anything. All sorts of trees will work. It doesn't matter what tree it is. You can chop it down by just hitting it. Now, you could also make an axe at this point, but I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you have a ton of resources. Now, we do have the resources to spare, but truthfully, until your first night's over, it's okay to just continue punching trees like this and getting them that way. So as you can see, there's our last one, and boom, now we have ourselves six more uh, of these wooden logs that we can then use to craft tools and all sorts of stuff. We're also going to use them to make torches because we'll need those underground in order to protect ourselves better as well as just see better underground. So I'm going to go ahead, chop this tree down, and then we'll make some torches. So there we go. All of that tree is now chopped down and we can come under here and make some torches. To do that, we want to go ahead and make ourselves some sticks and then we want to take these sticks and pair them with the coal here. So if we take five coal, five sticks right like that, we get ourselves some torches, 20 to be specific. Now we can place these down and see so much better. We missed this coal because we couldn't see before and now we can. So that's great. I also want to mention the offhand and oh, see it is now getting dark outside. Sun is setting. So at this point, I would go ahead and just close this up. We don't really need to see out there. If you want, you can break like one block right like so to kind of see out there. But honestly, I don't even think it's worth it at this point. We're just going to wait it out, right? 
Now our time is going to be spent underground mining. The things we're looking for right away. We are looking for coal, which we have here, luckily. If you do struggle to find coal, you can one, restart, or you can go look above ground. As you could see earlier, we did find coal earlier in the video, but we skipped by it because, well, we didn't necessarily get to that point until later on. So nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead, mine this coal, and then we're gonna be looking for iron. Iron is the next basically upgrade in the ore tree that we're looking for. What do I mean by ore tree? Well, let's talk about it for a second. There's a few different options when it comes to ores in Minecraft, but the basics are this. Wooden tools are the lowest tool that you can make, followed by stone, followed by iron, followed by gold, followed by diamond, and then last but not least, there is netherite. So that's kind of the ore tree. It goes wood, stone, iron, gold, diamond, netherite. Because of that, that's why we're moving on now to focusing on getting iron. We've gotten stone, now it's time to get some iron. It is also probably worth at this point going ahead and crafting yourself a sword. A sword can be especially helpful if you accidentally run into some mobs and it's time to fight. To do that, just come up here. We want to create some more sticks and then we want to put one stick at the bottom and then two of the stone on top to get ourselves a stone sword. And now we can defend ourselves should we get into any sort of sticky situations with some mobs later on. I'll go ahead and do a jump cut here until the first night is over. Fortunately, you can set a timer for that, but overall, I just like to run up and check, and whenever I see that it's daylight, we'll move on. But uh, we've got quite a bit of nighttime still left. Nevertheless, I will see you once that's done, and unless I find some interesting things along the way, which I'm sure I will. So I did just notice there's one little tip that I like to use when I'm mining, and that's putting torches in my offhand. To do that, you will open up your inventory take your torches and you see this slot right here it's meant for a shield but you can also put torches here and by doing that you can simply left click or right click excuse me to place those down whereas left clicking is going to be breaking your blocks so there you go a little pro tip if you will to be able to hold your torches and not have to switch back and forth in your inventory all the time now the mining pattern that i'm using here is very very strategic so instead of just mining straight down i'm mining in basically a stair step sort of pattern so we're working our way down one at a time the reason is because if we dig straight down, who knows what's below us. We could fall into lava, we could fall into a ravine, all sorts of stuff. You've probably heard it before and it remains true. Don't dig straight down in Minecraft. Dig at an angle. That way, if you run into something, you can react to it without uh, falling to your death. Now, one of the ores that has been added recently is this. This is copper. I'm actually just going to skip by it. There's very little use from what I know in game, or early game, excuse me, for copper. So we're just going to leave it for now and uh, not let it fill up our inventory. Do you see what just happened, by the way? Our pickaxe broke. We need to go make a new one. Hopefully, this pickaxe will yield us our first iron pickaxe. Let's see if it happens. So we have done a lot of mining and it is now daylight time. As you can see, the sun has kind of just rose. Now, before we continue on here, we're actually going to make a few sticks and make some stone tools. So in order to do that, unfortunately, I didn't find any iron on that mining run, but we want to go ahead and just outfit ourselves with full stone tools here. So a stone shovel, we've already got our sword, we've already got our pickaxe, but a stone shovel. We're also going to make an ax really fast. So that is a stone ax. And one more we're going to make is actually a stone hoe. The reason for that is because we are going to start farming. The most sustainable method of basically feeding yourself in Minecraft is farming. So let's go ahead and get that going. And while we are in a snowy environment, you can still farm here. Uh, even though it isn't ideal, you still can. So what we want to do is go ahead and find ourselves some grass. Now, right over here, we have some. Luckily, even in snowy environments, they are here. And you want to punch this. And look at that. We got a seed already. So you're just going to punch this grass until you get, you know, a few seeds. If you're in a biome with a ton of grass, then you can get a lot of seeds. You know, the more, the better to get you started. I would recommend at least three. I'm going to shoot for about nine seeds to get started with here because there is a decent amount of grass, but it really is just up to you. Uh, by the way, if you accidentally pick up stone balls, you can throw them. It's kind of cool. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, get nine seeds here, and then we'll go ahead and get our initial farm up and running. All right, so there we go. We have now gathered nine of these seeds. Now, I am going to go ahead and change the weather. Uh, the reason for that is because we're doing a tutorial. The, the snow doesn't really do anything. Uh, this would be rain if we were in a non-snowy biome, other than make it harder for you guys 
to see what's going on. So the most efficient farm setup that we can do, we can't actually do here because uh, I believe it will freeze if we do it how I would like to. So what we want to do is just find some water, right? Find some empty water, which is probably going to be over here. And then we're going to till the ground. Now, I don't know uh, what's under it. It looks like we're going to have sand under this. So it might actually be in our best interest to whip out some of this dirt that we have and create kind of a custom farm platform right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have nine pieces. So that means we're going to go ahead and place down nine pieces of dirt here for our farm. So boom and one there and we'll go ahead and come out one now one thing worth noting is that a block of water can actually do and, and saturate four blocks of this now how am i doing this well i'm simply taking out my hoe and i'm right clicking on the dirt and when you right click on the dirt it tills it and now you can plant this now again you can see it's getting saturated by the water technically four blocks away is the maximum it will do. So we could go ahead and actually place down one more of these and that block will get saturated because it's one, two, three, four. If you had a piece of dirt here, it wouldn't, but four blocks away will, there it goes. So now we can go ahead and till all of this and of course plant our seeds because well, it's time to get to farming. The more of these, the merrier, check in on them once a day and they will grow into wheat and with that wheat we can then go ahead and take that craft it into bread and get our basically endless food cycle going so that is a great way to do that we kind of want to remember where this is at though because we cut down our tree okay i need to uh mark this real quick let's go ahead and take andesite here and we're gonna mark where this is at because uh, otherwise i am going to lose it and uh, we don't want to do that also mark our farm down here just because uh might as well um you know the more stuff you can have like landmarked and this is where stuff is i think overall the better so now we know that right there is our farm so nonetheless now what do we do we've got our farm set up we've got our mining going we've got our seeds going well what do we do well, it's time to build a house and this is actually a good base for a house but i'm gonna go ahead and use cobblestone to get our first house going um we're gonna build it kind of up here on this platform i just like how it looks kind of looks over everything we'll remove this uh this hideous pillar that i made and then we'll be good to go so let's go ahead and do that now a basic house can be kind of anything you want usually it ends up being a square so i'm not doing anything specific here i'm literally just placing down blocks in a pattern a square pattern that i think would work well there's no science to it. And the more you overcomplicate building in Minecraft, the more difficult it's going to be to build. So I would recommend just going ahead and building it right like so. Why am I leaving this space? We're going to make some windows. We're going to get fancy. It's our first house, but I like to be able to see outside. So we're going to put windows on all sides. We'll also need a door. One thing worth noting that I didn't do here is you may want to make this one more block over because that way you can just put one door instead of two doors down. So for example, now we have one, two, one, two. So our door would go right there, right? That's where we'll put our door. And then uh, I can just erase these and redo it. And that's the thing with building. It is okay to mess up. As a matter of fact, you will mess up all the time and you'll just rip it up. Just mine it up and, and, and replace it and you're gonna go so there we go we have now created kind of the basis of this house you can kind of see the vision going on there it's not great by any means but uh, it's pretty good right it's pretty decent and it is our first house so I'm proud of it now we will need a roof but before we do that let's go ahead and mine all of this up and move it inside of the house so we're gonna use our axe on that and our pickaxe on the furnace and we can move these into the house for now i'm just going to leave the floor snow or grass we can change that out later very very simply now at this time you might also want to start storing some stuff so let's go ahead and craft our first chest by opening up our crafting table and on the outskirts of the crafting table putting down our wood now, as you can see we have one chest here we didn't have enough for two but that's okay because we do have some more wood that we can craft into planks and make another now you can just use one but i would recommend just getting two because if you place on one chest it's this big but you can also double chest and it's this big allowing for more storage of more items we also want to go ahead and uh, put a roof on this property let's go ahead and do that real fast i'm going to go ahead and use hmm i want to use our spruce planks but uh, we're kind of short on trees around here so we'll just make this an all cobblestone house but in order to make it a bit more unique we're going to create some of these slabs here to use instead of just placing full blocks. Now what we can do is go up on top and place these slabs around and uh, create a roof, right? Right like so. Now I'm going to change the weather. The reason I can change the weather, by the way, 
to weather clear, for example, is because I have cheats on. If you don't have that, you won't be able to run that command. But again, the the basically rain can help your crops grow faster. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we just want to go ahead and, you know, make it easiest for you all to see. And so that's what that does. So there we go. Our house is now built. It's by no means perfect. But guess what? I am not a perfect builder. Most likely, neither are you. And you'll learn over time and it'll get better and better. Now, I did say we were going to go ahead and create, make some glass. It's a bit of a flex this early on, but let's go ahead and do it. So we can take our shovel. We've got plenty of sand over here. And what we want to do is mine, I don't know, probably 15, 10, 15 blocks of sand. And then with that, what we're going to be able to do is create glass. So boom, there we go. That should be good. And now if we come over to the furnace and put it in the furnace. It will turn into glass. So boom and put it in there and it's going to turn into glass. Now, this is our first house. Our first house is up and running. There's only one real thing that you need to do before it's time to go for diamonds, in my opinion, and that is a bed. Having a bed allows you to skip the night in Minecraft. Unfortunately, you need sheep to do it. Do you see any sheep around here? I don't. And I think this is actually going to be quite a uh, quite a trek for us to be able to find these sheep. We might get lucky and find them close by, but it might be a, a journey. Now, as you can see, I forgot to put our coal in there. And uh, it's also getting relatively late in the day. You know, we're in the second half of the day here. Instead of going for sheep right away, we're actually going to go on a diamond mining sort of adventure here. And then after we mine and hopefully find some iron, get some ores, then we'll go ahead and go and find the sheep in the next day cycle. But at this point, you've definitely survived the first night. We're now on the second night and about to go into the third. How awesome is that? That you've already completed all of that. You've got your house. We've got our glass here. And I'm just going to go ahead, sit here for a second, let this glass finish up. Then we'll finish up the house. And then we'll go on our mining adventure. And by the way, you can craft a door at this point. Now, different types of wood do produce different types of doors. This is the more spruce door. It's all closed off. Oak doors, for example, are more open. You've got options there, but uh, you now have a door to the house. We just need some windows. And then we have ourselves a nice little house here. So all we needed to get started was six things of glass. We can now take them, put them in here right like so, and make 16 panes of glass. This not only gives our windows more uh, depth and texture, but it also means we can use a lot less sand and a lot less glass to, uh, you know, make this entire house. And that's actually all we needed there. So look at that. Our house is now complete. You have your first house just as the sun is setting. Like I said, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and travel down and to the mines. If you did move your crafting table, make sure you bring enough spruce to create a new crafting table that we will use in the mines. You can also go ahead and, you know, clear out your inventory, all of that stuff. Make sure you do keep any food that you have, though, as well as I would keep the wood. That way, if you do need to craft torches or anything like that down in the mine, you can do so relatively easily. So there we go. At this point, this is kind of what I would go with. I would go with a crafting table, all of our spruce planks, as well as our stake, our stone sword, stone pickaxe, and stone shovel. Let's go do some mining. Now we're just going to use the existing mine that we have here and uh, go down here and get to mining. There's no real reason for me to, you know, show you all this. We did find lapis earlier. At this point, we don't even need lapis and uh, you can mine it if you want, but you don't need it. So we're still mining straight down in this sort of pattern. And whenever I do find our uh, iron, I will be sure to clue you in. We have been mining for a very long time and finally we have found iron. I'm hoping we have uh, found a few pieces of iron, and we have. We have gotten lucky here and found a few pieces of iron. Now, we're also, I believe, we hit F3. We'll be able to see our coordinates. Yes, we are around 16, uh, 14, 16. That's a great place to actually look for iron. What am I talking about? Well, right here. Y. Y level 16 is a great place in the newer versions of Minecraft to be looking for iron. So that's what we are. We're down here right at the level we need to be and we found iron right away. Now I'm going to go ahead and head up to our kind of base area at the top. We're going to see if it's nighttime or if it's daytime and then uh, we'll come back down here and get going. But we're also, while we're up here, running to our house, which is our safe space now, our safe zone. We do need to put some torches down in there, by the way. But that is our safe area. Area and we can go ahead and smelt this up. So let's come up here to the top. It looks like it is still 100% nighttime. It is snowing again, but we'll leave it this time. And we can go ahead and craft some iron tools. Now, by default, I would recommend crafting just a pickaxe, especially until you have an abundance of iron. By the way, we need to put some torches in here to keep the monsters away. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and 
take this iron, put it in here, and now we will get iron bars, which you can use to craft. Now, like I said, by default, I'm actually just going to make iron pickaxes until we have an abundance of iron, and it is still nighttime. How much longer do we have at nighttime? Eh, God, where's the moon even at? I don't even know. But nevertheless, we will get back into the mines as soon as this is uh, crafted, as soon as our pickaxe is crafted, and then we'll be able to hopefully find an abundance of iron. All right, so we've got our three iron ingots. We can now go ahead and take these and craft ourselves an iron pickaxe. Awesome! So now we can use this to mine a lot quicker, and uh, oh, while we're up here, we'll go ahead and make ourselves some more torches as well. I did just notice that we had ran out of those, so right like so, make some more torches. Uh, where'd our coal go? Oh, it's all in the furnace. Go ahead and make some more torches, and then we'll be able to get back down into the mine and start, well, mining again. This time, hopefully coming back up with a lot more iron. One thing I did want to mention is, at this point, you may want to consider, instead of mining down, which you can do, you still got a lot of ways to go down, but we're looking for iron. This is the perfect place to look for iron, so I'm just going to mine straight ahead uh, in this sort of a pattern here. And uh, you can mine in a few different ways. One of which is using mine shafts. So now that we've mined this out, if we want to just mine straight ahead every third block, that allows us to see all of these blocks right here in each mine and uh, kind of mine efficiently, right? That's the most vein mining sort of efficiency that you can do. And uh, it's time consuming, but it's how I've always mined and I like doing it. I would recommend checking out other methods and look at that. We've already found more iron online for finding things like diamonds, netherite, all of that stuff. There is uh, much better videos online for that than uh, I'm providing here. This is the basics of Minecraft, not the basics of finding all of these ores. But uh, my goal here is to find enough ore in order to craft a full armor set, because once we've got that, we can really move on into this tutorial. So we are still mining, and uh, I wanted to get, like I said, enough, for, enough iron for a full armor set, and... Uh, in order to do that, you end up finding stuff like this, which is a ravine, and I would recommend exploring every cave system ravine you find. A lot of times, it can be a way to quickly find some different ores. Just be careful not to get lost, but as you can see, ooh, we've got a mine shaft down there. That is a huge, huge find, but we've also got some more iron across the way. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is one of those times where it's actually okay to mine down because we can see where we're going, but... Uh, I'm going to go over here, grab some of this iron, and just explore this. It's a great way to be able to find ores quickly while still maintaining your current pickaxe and all that stuff. As you can see, our pickaxe is almost out, but we have found so much iron here because we found this ravine, as well as because we've been just strip mining. So now we're at 20 iron, uh, plus there's a few more right there. We have 47 uh, iron ore, which is way more than we need. Uh, we only need 24, but I kind of just was in that mine and I just kept finding and finding and finding iron. Now, at this point, it's time to kind of move on to the next part, which is one, creating our iron armor set, and then diamonds. We need to find some diamonds. Now, diamonds are the best overworld armor you can get. What do I mean by overworld? Well, there's the nether as well, and in the nether, you can get netherite. As far as diamonds though, the distribution changed in 118, and they can now be found between Y15 and Y-63. The lower the better though, so Y-60 can be a good place to mine. And again, to access that, hit F3, and you'll be able to see negative over here, negative 60 for example. Right now we're at positive 64. It is still daytime outside, or nighttime outside. That is okay, we're just coming up here to kind of regroup. Now, obviously, we want to go ahead and turn all of our raw iron into iron ingots. And then once we have 24 iron ingots, we can make that armor set. Now, going back to diamonds, there are tons of videos out there dedicated on just getting diamonds. Go check those out. The best gear in Minecraft, though, is actually netherite. And in order to find that, you will need to access the nether. We are going to do that next. That's our final step in this tutorial. I would recommend getting diamond, full diamond armor, full diamond tools, all of that stuff before going to the nether in an extensive and big way. But you can just pop over to the nether, check it out, and then come back at this point if you don't have your diamond armor and tools yet. As far as mining netherite goes when you get there, though, that's again going to be a great place where you can just Google the best way to find netherite. Because there are tons of great videos out there, and this video is already pushing nearly an hour long. So by including that in there, it just gets even longer when there are amazing guides out there on getting netherite. After that, the world's kind of yours, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and get our iron armor 
craft it on up, and then we'll be able to get to the nether. All right, so all of our ingots are now crafted and or furnished, if you will, and we can go ahead and create all of our armor. So there's our helmet, there is our body, there is our leggings, and we need some boots as well. Now, if you go ahead and click on all of these, or excuse me, shift click on all these, it will move them up here. You can also just click and move them into your armor slot. Now, we have this new sort of area right above the health bar. And in that area, you'll be able to see that we have our armor. If you have netherite armor, that'll be completely full because, well, it's the best armor in Minecraft. I believe diamond gets it near full and then netherite completes it off. So there you go. That is how you can get your armor. Now, there was a hard jump cut there. I apologize for that. I was trying to do this all as one with no jump cuts, but I kind of got distracted finding obsidian and it ended up turning this video into way longer than it needed to be. All you need to know about finding obsidian that it is created when water flows over a lava source block. So water flowing over lava is not going to work. It needs to be a source block of lava. There are lava pools. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, instead of like going and searching one out and finding it, I'm just going to kind of use some movie magic to jump right to one in order to show you what I mean. But uh, then you can use water over that in order to create obsidian. So let's go ahead and jump back in game and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if we go ahead and take over this pool of lava here, and place down this water, you can see all of that turns in to obsidian. We can now take and mine this and use it on our nether portal. So in order to do that, you want to go ahead and just mine it. I think it takes 15 per, uh, per obsidian. I believe you need 12 in order to create a nether portal, but uh, let me just Google and verify that real fast. I know that's kind of weird, we're making a tutorial, but sometimes you forget things, and so you need to go to Google. So let's see how many obsidian for nether portal. And, uh, We'll see exactly how many we need. And Google says we need only 10. So I was wrong. We need 10 and not 12. So I'm going to go ahead, get all 10 of these, and then we will get to the nether. I spent way too much time going over what I just did. It literally took me about half an hour to go over what I just did in the other like non jump cut sort of take. So I wanted to do this because it's a lot more efficient and shows you a lot simpler what you need to know. One last thing worth mentioning, you have to have diamond pickaxe in order to mine obsidian. You cannot mine obsidian without a diamond pick. It just won't work, right? Also, keeping some uh, water flowing like this is a great way to make sure that you don't lose any obsidian to lava. So you have this water flowing, and as we mine this obsidian, you'll see, boom, it turns that into obsidian, and we get the one that we were mining. So just another little pro tip, if you will, but uh, we'll see you once we have 10 obsidian. So here we are back in the overworld. Now we want to go ahead and create our portal. To do that, we we want to place down one random block and then we want to do two obsidian and then we want to go ahead and place a, another random block then we want to come up like this and do one two three obsidian come to the other side one two three obsidian and then we want to do a random block on both sides and then obsidian in the middle now to light this you just take and right click it with your flint and steel you now have a nether portal again you want to have full diamond armor full diamond kit if you will in order to go to the nether super safely and uh all that but at this point you can start exploring the nether there is so much to do here it is overwhelming and at this point, the world is yours. You can create an enchantment table. You can enchant your items to make them even stronger. That way you can kill even more stuff more efficiently. It is kind of crazy everything you can do. However, there is one more thing I want to mention, and that is multiplayer Minecraft. Now, there are tons of different servers out there. For example, if we go into multiplayer here and then click proceed, we have all of these servers. These are all survival servers. Roughcraft all the way to Tulip Survival are all survival servers. And there's a link to the description down below for our list of these five servers with a little information about each of them. However, there's also Hypixel, the most popular Minecraft server ever, and you can check that out as well. The IP for that is mc.hypixel.net, but there's tons of amazing Minecraft servers out there. However, you may want to start your own Minecraft server, and that is Apex Minecraft Hosting. So you can go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. We love to Apex so much that we host every single Minecraft server we have on Apex, and if you're a beginner, that's okay, because Apex has 24-hour, 7-day-a-week live stat support to help you out. So whenever you do finish up with a survival single player, you might want to check out multiplayer. There are survival multiplayer servers, but also mini game servers with all specific sort of game modes. And you can even take a run at creating your own server if you want. But 
nevertheless, that's it. That is our complete guide to Minecraft in 2023. On top of all that, it was tons and tons of information in there. You can go to the end now, right? You can Google tutorials on getting to the end. You can kind of take your own learning from there. We also have guides in the description down below on things like mods, servers, all sorts of stuff. The resources in the description are super valuable on this video, so go check those out. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up. We will see you in the next one and enjoy Minecraft in 2023.